That was uh, the Black Chords, their new release single, Dance, Dance, Cl- Dance. And we have the Black Chords ma- lead singer, Nick, on the line. Hi, Nick. Good, how are you? Where are you? Sunny Melbourne. Oh, okay. So tell us, tell us about your, your, new, uh, your new single, Nick. Um, yeah, it's the first first release we've had for a little while and it's the um, first single off the upcoming album which should be out in August um, yeah I, I don't know it's um, it's kind of feels like a bit of a milestone for us we've um, been touring off the back of the last album um, which is our debut kind of over in Europe and, and Australia a few times of both um, and then came back to Australia and decided to start working on this record and um, got to admit, we all kind of suffered a bit of writer's block, um, and it was it was spending months and months trying to write and dance. Seemed like it was was one of the days when I, I kind of walked into the studio and I I was getting frustrated with where I was at, okay. and decided to just write for the hell of it, write for me, write for not worrying about black chords, not worrying about whether it would be an album or a single song, and uh, and then it just came out. So kind of feels like it was it was the start of an unblocking process that's great and i've read i read that you actually bunkered down in an isolated barn is that correct yeah 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 i just kind of got rid of all the farm animals and uh, <laughs> brought in like lots of microphones okay how was that process it was awesome it was um i think last time when we recorded the record the um, our debut we were in Melbourne and worked a lot from Sing Sing and a, another small studio and felt kind of a little bit cooped up and felt like we were still in the same day-to-day grind even though we were working on this record. And this time around, we just knew that we needed to get out of town and be able to just really kind of throw ourselves into this process and, and not, not kind of go through the day-to-day life because I guess when you're so kind of consumed with writing and, and recording and, and creating, this is, it isn't a day-to-day kind of process. So, so we wanted to just get get away and and have our own space, make it our own, and, and not worry about time constraints or getting home each night. Right. So, uh, respective partners, how did they feel about that? Um, it was it was a sh- short period, and in some respects, I think it's probably uh, easier. Easier because we're not the easiest people to get along with when you're in the in the mindset of recording. It's so internal in in many ways, and it's frustrating, and 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 you're completely consumed by it. So mm. I remember going through the the process um, for the debut album, and it was really difficult for us. It was you come home and and you weren't really there you were elsewhere and um and i can imagine that would be pretty frustrating for for the partners 
Yeah, I bet. So just for our slam listeners out there, um, can you describe the type of music that you guys play? Um, <coughs> we're all really into kind of very um, layered electronic acoustic music into a lot of this kind of this um, just reflective kind of tones so in a way we're an indie rock band but um, in many respects we're a kind of a lot more darker and reflective than, than what you imagine of these kind of upbeat um, electric guitar um, bands we also kind of yeah spend a lot of time layering each instrument um so I'd kind of, in two words, moody rock and roll. Oh, moody rock and roll. I like the sound of that. Um, your forthcoming album, What can you tell us what it's called? Um, at the moment, we've got a lot of working titles. So, um, oh, okay. Uh, a Thin Line is one of them. Okay. The so look out for The Thin Line, people. That might be on the uh, CD charts very shortly with the black chords. Now, you guys are coming up to Nara. You're stopping into Little Nara Town. Um, yeah. What else? Where else are you touring? At the moment, we're doing a short tour. We're um, kind of heading past an hour on the way up to Sydney, and then just doing some shows in Sydney. Mm -hmm. um, back down to Melbourne and Geelong. Um, well, that's it for the single launch, and then we're back in, just kind of rehearsing and doing some. Hello. I'm Look, still here. Oh, great. Oh, good. I, I thought you might have been, uh, dropped out there. Uh, yeah, so you're going to be playing uh, in Nara on the uh, this Sunday? On this Thursday night. This Thursday. Sorry, I've got my days mixed up. So this Thursday night at a well-established venue in Nara. Uh, a lot of uh, people rock out over to that place. Um, definitely get in there and have a good time. And we'll definitely hope to get down there and check you guys out. Yeah, thank you. So thanks, Nick, for joining us today on The Slam, 92.7 Bay and Basin FM. Uh, it's been great having you along. Hope to get to meet you on Thursday night. And um, we'll play your single next week and the week after. We've already... Excellent. Sorry? Excellent. Yeah, that'd be great. So enjoy the tour. Hope the, de hope the single release is really well. And your forthcoming album is uh, a success. Cheers. Thanks for having us. You're welcome. I hope it's not too cold down there for you. So now we're just going to be uh, putting on Subtly Change, used to think, from their 2011 album. <laughs>
Concerned. I've okay. been involved. And that was Bury Me Deep in Love by the Triffids. And that was a shout out to one of a, one special person out there that I know. So that was for you. Also, we had Southerly Change Used to Think. Now, Michael, we have a very special guest in our studio. Uh, well, it's actually a phone interview. Uh, Sue Willis from Narrow Players is uh, here on the phone to join us. Yes, uh, Sue. Hi. Hi. How are you doing? Excellent, thanks. Excellent. Good. Now, uh, you've got an exciting play on at Narrow Players, I see. Yes, we've got a, a new production starting on Friday called Pack of Lies, it's which is um, based on a true story which happened in England in uh, 1960. Fantastic. So how did you come across this play? Oh, I saw it many years ago. I can't remember where I saw it first, but many years ago, and I... It sort of stuck in my mind, and I kept thinking about it for weeks after. It could happen to anybody, this situation. And it probably still goes on, mm. although the Cold War in Russia is over, but there's still spying in all different areas of, of life, I Without giving the, the, the sort of the, the plot too much away, can you give us a bit of a synopsis of uh, what's it like? Well, yes, there's um, just an ordinary suburb in London, um, Rice Whip. Uh, now, the London suburb where people just live ordinary lives, minding their own business, you know, usually happy and contented. And uh, this particular couple and their daughter live together in, in happiness and contentment. And they've got friends that come across the road and greet them and see them, and it's, it's like part of the family. And um, one day they get a phone call from Scotland Yard and a visit from a, um, Mr. Stewart from the um, Scotland Yard department and their life changes. Wow. Um, and um, that's all I'll say about it because uh, we want to keep people Don't give the plot away <laughs> too much. Fantastic. <laughs> it's had a bit of a history. I've seen this, uh, noticing on the, the internet some, uh, some, some information about its uh, track record. It's yes. uh, had a great sort of run on, on West End. It's been on the West End. It's, it's been, been a movie. It's a film. And yes. It was also on the, in America on, on Broadway, or one of the big theatres in, the, in America. And I think the leading lady on one, either the play or the film got an award for the um, Best Actress. I think it was Judy Dench, actually. She won uh, Lawrence Olivia well, Award. Judy so. Dench actually won it, but mm. one of the others, I think, did. But anyway, mm. um, yes, it's had quite a good, um, good um, history of um, you know, success. I'm hoping that we're going to have the same amount of success here. I don't suppose we'll have any... Um, awards, but <laughs> they could well be deserved of an award. But we don't usually have um, um, Emmys or Sammys or. We might. Maybe we should have some for the Shellhaven. We should have Shellhaven <laughs> Emmys. I Maybe think, we have yeah. the Slam Drama Awards. Maybe we can introduce we something. Have, so. Yes, yeah, good idea. Now, yeah. so give us some information about uh, when it's on and where it's yes, on. And it's on at Nara Theatre, Nara Bombardieri uh, Theatre, quite, quite close to the railway station. For anyone that doesn't know where it is, in Maru Street, and. Um, the tickets can be bought from the information centre, just near the bridge. Um, the, we open on Friday and we go for ten performances, which uh, are over the 
from Friday's the 1st and the last performance is the 16th of June. So we run re vaguely sort of from Wednesday through to Saturday, but we're not doing the Saturday of a long weekend. Well, if it's anything like Eurobeat, uh, me and Vanessa both went along and I laughed profusely. I'm sure this will be a major success for uh, our players. It won't be a laugh to um, uh, production because the topic is not a, um, sort of one that we, we laugh, but it's an interesting one and a very um, very well written and very well acted, Wonderful. I must say, um, production. So uh, come along and, um, and see it. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much, Sue, for that. And um, we'll keep the, 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 the listeners um, up to date with all the information about when the play is on. And yes. Uh, if yes. they want to contact us, they can contact us through our website or uh, no doubt through the, um, through the theatre. Yeah, and, oh, I must say, there is a matinee for anybody that's interested on Sunday. A matinee, so oh, if anyone that doesn't like to go out into the cold winter's evening, so you can come along on Saturday. Sorry, Sunday, Sunday. Fantastic. On Sunday, yes. Okay, so thank you very much for, for joining us today. Oh, a pleasure. It's a pleasure. wonder. Thank you very much. Bye. And that was Sue Willis from Nara Plays. She's the director of a new production there called uh, Pack of Lies. We've got Ben McNeil on now. Uh, Bit of a local fave, Ben. Yeah, he is. Good Good, uh, good local uh, muso. Been a few times in uh, in Nara. We have, we have, and we are uh, one of our one of our slam listeners actually received one of his EPs as a giveaway. Indeed. So, yeah, so let's let's enjoy Ben. Ken, Katie Store from his uh, 2012 uh, single EP. Into the park with your mom. It was so much fun. We were 16, moved away to some place near the snow. Where have you It's song called Candy Store from his new um, single EP, I 2012. Think so. Yeah, Stand By Steady, I'm pretty sure it I is. I think we went to the single launch, Big Night in Nara. Yeah. For that one, good yeah. night. Go, yeah. Ben. Go, Ben. You're on Bay and Basin FM. It's uh, just past 5.30. Yeah, we've just slipped past 5.30. It's 5.33, um, but um, I don't mind. I don't think people will mind if we sort of go on a few more extra minutes. There's a bit more we sort of wanted to cover about what's happening in Shoalhaven. So we might just jump quickly look through some of the arts uh, events that are happening, Vanessa. Boy from Oz. At the uh, Shoalhaven Entertainment Centre. At the Shoalhaven Entertainment Centre, yeah. It goes from 
1st of June through the 10th of June. Um, I'll be seeing it on Sunday, so looking forward to that. I, I'm going to hope to try and get along. It's a local theatre company, I think, Albatross. Albatross Musical Theatre. Should be amazing. Company. Yeah, it should be good. Yeah. And um, the Entertainment Centre doesn't get a lot of musicals, so it'll be interesting to see how good and the lighting, lighting and sound is for that one because they, they are pretty good with their lighting and sound. So. Yeah, but I think the locals like that sort of thing. I think they're Oh, into the yeah, musicals. absolutely. I've a couple of big sort of uh, song and dance numbers down there. Yeah. Um, so uh, I'm sure the funders will be very supportive. It'll be, it'll be good afternoon. Well, I'm going in the afternoon, so it'll be good afternoon on Sunday for me. Fantastic. Uh, sea Change Festival. John came in last week and gave us a fabulous wrap of what was going on. 31 exhibits or something oh. over the two weeks. Music. There's a predominant in Huskisson. Huskisson, St George's Basin, I think, a bit in, in Willamire as well. There's a few artists down so in Willamire. So that's starting this weekend, I think. This weekend on Saturday uh, combines the big opening of Sea Change with World Environment Day, which is down at Lady Denman. So Fantastic. I was there at the last one and it was a great day. It's always good. Mm. The markets are always great, but combining it with Sea Change is really good. The pirates from BBCR are coming down to entertain the crowds. Great local yeah. band from Sanctuary Point. Not too sure if... Bay and Bass and FM's doing an OB down there. They did last mm. last time, but maybe next time. So the Arts Festival goes through to the 17th of June. So if you want details, there's a website. There's also lots of brochures floating around the sort of uh, Jarvis Bay area. So uh, try and find out what's going on and sort of head down to Jarvis Bay. For Looking the forward to the Les Crosby dinner uh, a couple of weeks on the 14th of June, Michael. Big night, 14th of June uh, at the Bombardieri uh, Bowling Club. Big night, big fundraiser for the uh, Shoalhaven uh, uh, Jazz uh, Society. Uh, sort of in honour of Les Crosby, you know, as we all know, great legendary sort of jazz museo from the area. Uh, tickets, are, I think, are still available, but it's going to be pretty, I think, tight to sort of get tickets now, I think, the last minute. But if you can, uh, go to the website for Shoalhaven Jazz and, 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 and look at the details there, how to get tickets. Otherwise, we can always put you in contact with Jenny. Um, just email us on theslam927 at bbcri.com.au. Uh, there's a movie night and a few weeks down at Husky Pictures for uh, Peter Hickson and the Utopia community. That's a great night and what a fantastic sort of um, uh, I guess charity or, and community to support. Uh, yep. Utopia is a wonderful arts community in Northern Territory. Yeah we'll get dates for you on that one for next week. Fantastic. And not forgetting narrow players. Of course. Pack of lies. We'll be there. We will be. It's on. A, it's a couple quite. A, I think it's two weeks of performances. That's narrow. what Sue said, players. which is great, and mm. a matinee. Mm. So for all you people who don't want to get chilly out there on and a. I'd suggest you buy evening. tickets early because last time with your ad beat it was sold out. So, yes, that's uh, true. And that was a great gig. Yeah, and you can get those from the information centre in Nara or contact Nara players. And a great venue too. It is. Love I love. Theater. I love that little theatre. It's great. Now, Vanessa, we have gone a little bit over time. So we must run. Mm. So, nice. uh, that was a really great show, Michael. <laughs> a very challenging show. <laughs> but, hey, we got through it. We did, and um, we can only get better. So thank you for joining us on The Slam once again, Wednesdays, 4.30 to 5.30, 5.37. Sometimes a little bit extra. <laughs> hey, we're a bit quirky and crazy. So uh, have a great week, and we'll catch you all See you next, next week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.